Hello everyone and thanks for watching Atopedia World videos. In this session of atomic structure, we'll start with Bohr's atomic model. Okay. So we have already covered Thomson's and Rutherford's atomic models. Now this model is given by Neil Bohr. All right. So let's have a look at how the model looks in 2D. Okay. So this is how you can depict it in pictorial form basically it looks similar to what Rutherford said that the neutron and the protons will be present inside the nucleus okay obviously at that time the neutrons or the protons were not discovered so they just knew that there is a nucleus with high positive charge and high mass present over there okay that is from Rutherford's experiment and there are concentric circles or circular orbits okay around the nucleus and in those circular orbits the electron is going to revolve okay so in that respect it is pretty much same as what Rutherford said okay now here Bohr has also given the names of the orbit as 1 2 3 4 or K L M N okay starting from the innermost orbit so let's look at the postulates of Bohr's atomic model okay so Neil Bohr said that electron revolves around the nucleus in fixed circular paths of definite energy that is the circular paths that we just saw all right so this is going to be our nucleus all right and around this nucleus are circular paths and these circular paths is where the electron is going to revolve okay so this is our electron and this is the nucleus right so he also named these this circular paths and he called them as orbits okay so this is one orbit similarly there can be other orbit which will be basically concentric to the first orbit okay so so on another important point over here is that the electron revolves in the orbit of definite energy in other words this means that the energy of the orbit in which electron is revolving is going to be fixed now this is something which is much different from Rutherford's postulate okay he didn't talk about energy at all okay at least not of the orbits okay so here Bohr is not saying that electrons energy will be fixed he's saying that the energy of the orbit is fixed the orbits are basically concentric circles they are also called shells okay and they are named as K L M and so on and so forth okay so it, the name doesn't start from a okay it is not a b c d it starts from k so the innermost shell or, or the orbit is called k shell then there is l then the third will be m then n then o and so on and so forth okay you can also call them as shell number one shell number two three and so on so the innermost shell will be one shell one or shell k okay so you don't need to actually know why it started from K but just for your curiosity sake alright so uh, the K L M and this notation was actually not given by Bohr alright this was given by some other scientist before Bohr and he named this K L M as energy states okay and not of electron he was just talking about some rays that he discovered okay they were actually kind of x-rays okay they were actually kind of excess of different energy so he named those rays as K uh, L M and and so on because he thought that before K also there might be some energies involved okay and if there are energies energy values involved before K then they need to be named later on if some other scientist is going to be going to discover them alright but it turned out that when Bohr calculated the energies for his orbits they had the same value as the energy th that were calculated by the name K L M and so on okay so let's forget about that for now and go on with the postulates of Bohr so the next point that he said was that the electron by itself okay as long as it is revolving in this circular motion so the electron is revolving in the circular motion around the nucleus so as long as it is following this circular motion it cannot radiate the energy or gain energy by itself so if you are not doing anything okay the, if the electron or the atom is isolated and it is present over there by itself 
so as long as that is the case the energy of the electron will remain fixed okay or the energy of the orbit will remain fixed okay so the electron is neither going to gain energy nor lose energy so this postulate actually helped in st establishing the stability of atom if you remember rutherford couldn't explain that why will the electron not lose energy and crash into the nucleus okay this form in this way okay in a spiral way so bohr said that these orbits are actually stationary states okay that is why they are also called stationary orbits or stationary states of electron so stationary word was used in order to indicate that the energy is stationary or the energy is constant electron by itself as long as it is traveling in the orbit okay in its velocity v cannot lose energy or gain energy all right then the energy of the particular orbit is fixed and constant that is if the orbit k okay let's take any atom for example if you are talking about hydrogen atom then for hydrogen atom the energy of k shell is say 10 joules then it will always remain 10 joules okay that is not the actual value but just for the sake of an example so energy of any particular shell for example if you take the shell o okay so the o shell will have same energy irrespective of where you are calculating it okay so if you take the hydrogen atom and you calculate the energy of its o shell then it will have same energy irrespective of which hydrogen atom you are talking about so the energy of a particular orbit is fixed and it is always constant that is why you can also say these orbits as energy states because they are actually fixed energy states okay so you can call them stationary states or energy states or fixed energy states or you can call them orbits or you can also call them shells all right and they are named as k l m or 1 2 3 4 5 and so on all right so let's go on so more postulates now this is a very important postulate of bohr's model okay so just like the first important point was that the energy of the orbit is stationary or fixed it cannot change and as long as the electron is revolving in that orbit the energy of electron will also remain fixed okay so the second most important point or the second very important point is that the orbits which have particular value of angular momentums are only allowed okay you might have studied this in physics that if you have a body in circular motion so that body in circular motion can move with constant velocity v okay and radius r all right so this is going to be a body with mass m velocity v and radius r okay so this v is the tangential velocity so let's assume that this body is right now electron so the electron revolves at fixed velocity in this circular orbits okay according to bohr model the velocity of electrons is fixed mass of the electron is fixed and since electron will remain in the same orbit the orbits are fixed the radius is also fixed that is to say the m the v and the r all these variables are actually fixed for a particular electron in a particular orbit okay for an electron in a particular orbit so if you remember you can also calculate angular momentum represented by capital l okay so the angular momentum vector for any body moving in a circular motion is actually product of mass velocity and radius that is l is equal to mvr so the magnitude of angular momentum is product of mv and r so this angular momentum okay so bohr said the angular momentum of electron cannot be any arbitrary value okay it is very specific and very fixed value which electrons angular momentum must take okay in fact he also calculated this fixed values and he said that the angular momentum of any electron is always an integral multiple of h divided by 2 pi okay so it is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi so this 
n indicates the integral multiple so n can only take integer values like 1 2 3 so it starts from 1 and so on and so forth up to infinity okay or up to n any random n value okay and h by 2 pi is a constant here h is the Planck's constant which we have already studied okay and we also know it's to be 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second okay so we know the value of cap h small h and we know 2 into pi okay pi is 22 divided by 7 or 3.14 approximately so you take this value and multiply it with n and you will get the angular momentum of the electron okay so this equation you have to remember okay this equation is a very important equation and it says that the angular momentum of an electron in circular motion in Bohr's orbits is fixed or is discrete it cannot take any random value so this n which takes the integer values is also an indication of the orbit number in which electron is revolving so if n value is 1 then the electron that you are talking about is actually revolving in the first orbit if n value is 2 then the electron is revolving in the second orbit and so on okay so this also means from this equation we can also calculate the orbit number or uh, okay or the shell number in which electron is revolving so the first electron or the electron in first orbit will always have an angular momentum magnitude of angular momentum as h by 2 pi okay the electron in second orbit will have an angular momentum of, of 2 into h by 2 pi okay the angular momentum of electron in fifth orbit will always be 5 multiplied with h by 2 pi all right and that is why this h by 2 pi value this is actually given a separate notation so h by 2 pi is also represented as h cross okay so you write h all right and then you put a cross over it so h cross okay so this h by 2 pi is also sometimes referred as h cross okay you write h and then put a perpendicular dash on it right so remember just remember this value that mvr is equal to n into h by 2 pi all right so this is the value of angular momentum this means the product of mass velocity and radius is always a discrete value it is not continuous value okay so the angular momentum will not have any value between h by 2 pi and 2 into h by 2 pi okay similarly it won't take any value between 2 h cross and 3 h cross okay so the electron will have an angular momentum of 2 h cross or then directly 3 h cross so the values in between okay the numerical values present in between okay on number line are not taken by the electron so in other words you can also say that according to Bohr the angular momentum of electron is quantize okay if you remember we have already studied this word quantized okay when we saw Planck's quantum theory we saw that quantize basically means that whenever a property takes only some discrete values and not all the values possible okay so if or it only takes some discrete values then that quantity is said to be that property is said to be quantized so here angular momentum cannot take all the values okay it can only take some specific values which means the angular momentum in according to Niel Bohr is quantized right. let's see some more postulates of Bohr so the discontinuous transfer of energy to electron right. see now the electron okay if this is the nucleus the electron will be revolving in orbit number one okay or it will revolve in the second orbit or it will revolve in the third orbit okay and so on so this means the energy of the electron will either be equal to the energy of first orbit that is e1 or it will be equal to second orbit e2 okay or it will be equal to e3 and so on e4 e5 up to e infinity okay that is assuming there are infinite orbits so the transfer of energy to electron is discontinuous 
all right so you cannot just randomly transfer any energy value to the electron okay for example if the electron is revolving in the second orbit it has an energy value of e2 okay so if you just decide to say give the electron an energy of less than e2 say you just decide to give it an energy value of 0.998 e2 okay you, how can you transfer energy to electron you can simply beam a ray of light on it right so this ray of light will be traveling in form of wave and it will impart an energy equal to h into nu so let's say that this energy is equal to 0.998 e2 so electron cannot take this energy okay this is some random value of energy which you are trying to impart to the electron it will simply give back that energy okay it will simply give back that same ray of light maybe in a different direction okay so it will emit back that radiation okay it won't keep it with itself because that is not possible the transfer of energy that is the energy which is being given to the electron on energy which is being received by the electron okay that is if electron gives us energy that is it radiates out energy then even that is going to be in discontinuous form okay in fact you can say that even the energy according to neil bohr is quantized okay so energy of electron also takes only some discrete values so let's study this absorption and emission of energy in a little bit detail okay it's quite important to us so what is absorption of energy absorption of energy by electron means that energy is being supplied to the electron okay so let's say this is orbit number 1 so n is equal to 1 and let's say this is orbit number 3 okay n is equal to 3 so if the electron is revolving in this first orbit okay the electron is present over here okay and if you want to shift this electron from first orbit to third orbit that is it possible yes it is possible you just need to supply right amount of energy in order to achieve this phenomena okay so the first orbit has energy value of e1 and the third orbit has energy value of e3 right so you just need to supply the energy difference what is the energy difference between these two orbits it is e3 minus e1 right so you just supply this okay or you can just take a mod value in order to make sure that okay in order to make sure that you get positive values so e3 minus e1 all right though you in this case you will get positive we'll see later on why so this is the amount of energy which i need to transfer to the electron if i want to shift it from first to the third orbit okay so this phenomena is absorption of energy okay so what will i do i will take okay a ray of light all right i'll take a ray of light all right and i will hit the electron with that i'll strike the electron with that ray of light okay and that particular ray of light must have an energy exactly equal to delta e that is e3 minus e1 if it is less than e3 minus e1 say if it is even slightly less than e3 minus e1 that is delta e then the electron cannot jump from 1 to 3 okay it is not like say this is the second orbit and since you have transferred the energy a little less than third orbit so electron cannot roam around somewhere between second and third orbit okay so this there is no orbit over here this is just empty space an electron cannot occupy this randomly present empty space okay it can only occupy the orbits as given by bohr all right so either it has to be in first orbit or second orbit or third orbit and if you want to send it to the second orbit you need to supply energy exactly equal to e2 minus e1 okay so you cannot supply more or less energy than that even if you supply more energy than what is required to shift it in the second orbit then it will not go into the second orbit okay all right so is this clear that is why we say it is discontinuous transfer of energy you cannot choose any random values okay so this was absorption of energy similarly there can be emission of energy emission of energy means that electron is going to radiate the energy out okay it is going to give the electron is going to give the energy to the atmosphere or the surrounding 
so when does that happen so whenever electron jumps from a higher orbit to lower orbit it radiates out the energy okay whereas when electron jumps from lower orbit to higher orbit it absorbs energy and here if the electron jumps from higher orbit it is present in orbit number 3 right now so if it if you want to push it to the first orbit so in order to do that we don't have to supply energy in fact electron will now be supplying energy to us okay if it wants to come to the first orbit so how will it do that it will simply emit a radiation or a ray of light okay and this particular ray of light will have the energy of exactly delta e equals to e3 minus e1 okay so this much energy will again be radiated out by the electron in this in the first case in the absorption case the energy was being received by the electron in the second case in the emission case the energy is being radiated out by the electron okay in fact if we remember planck's theory you can also calculate the wavelength and frequency of this radiation which will be emitted or being or which will be absorbed okay if you remember the energy of any photon is h into nu okay and radiation are basically photons they are packets of energy so h into nu is equal to delta e all right h is the planck's constant so from here you can calculate the frequency of the emitted radiation as delta e divided by h all right and you can substitute delta e as e3 minus e1 so is this clear all right let's hope so because this is very important all right this energy part and as well as the angular momentum part okay let's move ahead so let's analyze this Bo neil bohr's model okay for a few minutes see you have a nucleus okay see you have a nucleus all right this nucleus will be positively charged okay just remember that this is going to be positively charged all right and around this nucleus will be electrons okay revolving in concentric circles okay concentric circular orbits okay with name 1 2 3 and so on okay. so this electron in a particular orbit always revolves with a fixed velocity okay a constant velocity or constant speed so as to say because the direction is changing continuously it is the tangential velocity so the electron will constantly revolve with fixed speed v and it will have a fixed radius r all right so since here electron is revolving in the second orbit we can say its velocity is v2 and its radius is r2 and mass of the electron is me right so here he has solved the dilemma which was caused by rutherford's model okay in rutherford's model we cannot explain the stability of atom but here we can explain the stability we know the electron is not going to crash into the nucleus because it cannot radiate out energy by itself okay that is as long as it is moving in a particular orbit it will keep on doing so for eternity right nothing is going to stop that okay so that is why we can say that the atom is going to remain stable it is not going to lose energy okay another thing rutherford in rutherford's model the electron would have continuously lose energy and slowly come nearer to the nucleus okay with every second with every millisecond with every moment it will come nearer to the nucleus but in bohr's model this is completely impossible he said that okay Uh, it's not proof okay it's just postulate okay there is no such evidence as such at least no it was not there at that time he just said that this won't be possible the electron can only jump it cannot have continuous movement okay it cannot run from here to there okay it can only jump from here to there so if this is the first second orbit this is the first orbit then electron can directly jump from here to here okay but it cannot move here in a continuous manner okay 
it cannot take a continuous path to reach a particular orbit okay so this is how the dilemma of rutherford was solved okay and he was able to explain the atomic spectrum as well okay the line spectrum of hydrogen which we haven't studied yet we'll be doing it in another session later on all right after a few sessions we'll see the line spectrum and what do we exactly mean by that and how bohr is able to explain that okay in the subsequent sessions we'll go into the further detail analysis of bohr's model and even its mathematical formulation for now let's wrap this up by going through the some of the drawbacks of bohr's model the first and most important drawback was that it was applicable only to one electron species that is the bohr's model was actually completely derived and postulated for hydrogen atom hydrogen atom has only one electron it was not applicable to helium lithium and other atoms so to apply it to other atoms okay we need to make those atoms into one electron systems for example if you have a helium atom the helium atom has two electrons so you lose okay you make the helium atom lose one electron you ionize the helium atom into he positive okay so now this he positive this species okay this is not helium atom this is actually helium ion you can say all right he positive so this species has one electron in it okay only one electron doesn't matter how many protons okay or the size or anything else but it has one electron so now we can apply bohr model bohr's model on this similarly lithium has three electrons okay so we cannot apply bohr model on lithium atom but we can apply bohr model on li2 positive because when two electrons are taken out from the lithium it will still have one electron left with it and so this li2 positive is basically a one electron species similarly beryllium okay we cannot apply the bohr's model on beryllium but we can apply it on be 3 positive okay so this was a very important limitation okay and a major drawback to bohr's model then he was unable to explain splitting of spectral lines in presence of magnetic and electric field okay we'll see what this statement actually means and how we can explain this spectral lines okay and their splitting okay not by bohr's model but by some other model similarly he could not explain too closely spaced lines in hydrogen atomic spectra now this point again is something that we'll study later on while studying spectra okay spectrum and he could not explain formation of chemical bonds in molecules okay he obviously cannot his model was applicable only for one electron species okay when atoms come together to form chemical bonds those combining atoms are not always atoms having one electron okay they can have 10 electrons they can even have 20 electrons all right so if he cannot explain the atomic structure of species with more than one electron he cannot even explain the bond formation of this okay so these are some of the drawbacks that we have to focus upon apart from that there are other drawbacks which we but which we don't have to go into okay as per our syllabus but remember that though the niels bohr's model atomic model has been discarded and we know today that it is wrong okay just like rutherford and at the thomson's model this particular model of niels bohr was a very important step okay towards the development of quantum mechanics or quantum physics okay something which we are going to look into towards the end of atomic structure topic okay so this is a very important section for your syllabus all right so remember that and until next time once again thanks for watching edupedia world videos